Mr. Rajkumar also is there, a part of this particular uh, profession. Uh, and uh, he, this is for a noble cause. They are de developing a lot of civil engineers. They are giving an idea how to start a, get into the industry. That is their primary objective and the knowledge addition. How to enhance the present civil engineers uh, in this particular industry, competitive industry. Uh, and I congratulate uh, uh, Rajkumar also for this uh, wonderful work, what he is doing for uh, the benefit of civil engineers. And uh, it's a uh, construction leaders is a professional engineering community which provides knowledgeable and skilled professionals. And they are helping with the placements also. Many placements they are supporting, job notifications they are providing. And I am glad to receive him in uh, CMTA's office today. And he's been working in industry standards of uh, BIM and Autodesk software, uh, working experience in AutoCAD, CAD, MEP, Revit, Navis Works, Bluebeam, many softwares here he is into working. And he's worked as a project assistant with uh, project assistant with the Indian Institute of Science in the Department of Center of Product Design and Manufacturing. And his profile is very long. So I will be sharing his profile in the chat box. You can go through his profile. So without uh, much taking uh, time for introduction, definitely, uh, if you listen to him, he will introduce more things. And he's a content creator in YouTube also. Many things are there. His profile is available in social media platform. You can get connected with him and uh, i wanted to hand over uh, this session to him so that he will quickly get into the program i thank all the engineers who have joined here and you can inform your friends also because this is a two hour session it is going to be uh, informative definitely he will leave some knowledge to you that is my Thought process for inviting him. Please, uh, you can take over, uh, Navi. And whoever is uh, want to speak uh, anything, please stay. And at the end of the, uh, he is having three presentation slides. Uh, means of a uh, PowerPoint presentation. Once he has completed, if you ask questions, that will be appropriate because many people are here and there also. And meanwhile, you can say if you want to leave some uh, messages in the chat box uh, regarding queries, you can use the chat box after uh, the session is over. He will check the chat box. He will reply. Over to Navin. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for your invitation, sir. Hope I am audible to online people. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hope it is clear from my side. Yes, sir. Yeah, as introduced. As introduced, I am Navin Kumar Naipogu. I carry four years of experience with me. When I was in the engineering finally itself, I got the internship in the BIM company. Then I started my career. After that, I moved to North Karnataka on a project basis. After that, I moved to IAC Bangalore in the Department of Center for Product Design and Manufacturing. I involved in some of the research projects. Then again, I came back to my parent company, that is Desapex. As mentioned earlier, Desapex is a digital engineering company. I will be explaining more and more in the coming slides. This is short about me. Uh, in this presentation, we are going to discuss these are all the contents. And before starting our session, I would like to ask you all. Has 
any one of you ever shot a dog? Okay, let me rephrase it. Uh, what is the recent movie you guys watched? Jailer, Jawan, John Wick, many movies are there, right? You, you experience anything, right? Now, let again come back to our question. There is a relation between what I asked and what, what I am talking. Has any one of you ever shot a dog? The session is available in both offline and online, right? I love offline because interactions happen. I don't want to keep it this presentation as a lecture or a seminar. <laughs> Whenever there is an interaction, then you will get most out of me. Otherwise, it will be like, uh, again, a beta class. What is your understanding of, has any one of you ever shot a dog? No. Anyone can say, what is your understanding first? Yes. <laughs> Super. Yes. And do some or other people have any other meaning? As we are human beings and we have inbuilt knowledge with us, we will be having many and many ideas. Either the short meaning goes to with a camera, clicking a picture, or really we are shooting with a gun. It depends upon the knowledge which we already have inbuilt which we gained. And when it comes to this one, we all are having a degree in civil engineering and we studied engineering graphics and drawings also. By seeing this picture, say there is one symbol. Uh, what is the meaning of that symbol? Oh, how you are telling that it is a door? How? Okay, then what is the meaning of this convention? <clears throat> How you are coming to know that is the door and that is a wall? Because we read it, we studied it and someone taught us if it is like this, say one vertical line and some quarter circle kind of thing, that is a symbol for the door. If there are two vertical lines and having some hatch pattern in that and that, then that is a wall. We read it, we studied it and someone taught to us. We gained that knowledge. So by having that pre-knowledge in us, we are able to identify something. But what if someone brings something else which you don't know at all and asks you? Our mind will get blank, right? So what I am coming to tell you is, we people only created the symbols and the conventions. Whatever the knowledge we have, with the help of that only, we will be able to talk, identify, and I can say, yeah, giving lecture also. Then, these conventions and norms work in a given social context. Say, for example, say, this is the symbol of the door in India. What if this is not the symbol of the door in America? Then meaning changes, right? Understanding changes. So there is an issue. There is an issue that these are all things changes to social context. It depends upon the people also. And these representations evolve and change as our capability changes. Say at the 10th standard, we studied something and we understood up to a certain amount. In the 11th, in the 12th, and in engineering, we studied something. Our level of understanding and maturity is evolving. I hope you are able to sense the difference, how we use it to understand and how we are understanding now. Let's come to our building information modeling. There is a lot to do with the symbols, the conventions and the representations. What comes first into your mind whenever I say BIM, the building information modeling? Okay, softwares, one point. What? Okay, design, next. 
Okay, has uh, any one of you heard before the building information modeling? How many of you say yes? Great. Okay. Okay. No problem. In this session, you will get to know each and everything. Yes, let's talk a little bit about our AEC industry, the architecture, engineering, and construction. Really, it is having very, very much width and depth in it. It is having so many sub segments like uh, real estate and urban development, and this all comes under the real estate and urban. If we look into a broad perspective, we have 9% share in the India's GDP. And 51 million people employed so far. There is a one website which is Invest in India. If you go to that website, then you will come to know what is happening in the India overall. It tells you about what are all the sectors present in India, what is the development of each and every sector, including construction. From there, I got this information. Let's come to a project team. Before going into the project team, let's say what is a project? What is a project? We did study in engineering and we did uh, dealt with uh, many subjects related to our projects only. I will give a simple definition about the project, not a very big one. I can say it is an activity which has proper start and end, which has a goal. And in between time, timeline is very important because a project which has, which never has a timeline will go infinite timeline. Whenever there is a deadline, then only we will come to know how important it is and how we have to plan the roadmap for the project. When it comes to construction project, each and every thing is unique. Whenever we are going to break the ground, we are going to build something new. Then these are all the engineers involved in the construction projects from architecture, civil, structural, electrical, and mechanical. Have you ever wondered what is the job for electrical and mechanical people in our building industry? What is the job for mechanical and electrical? Say, in this room, we are sitting now and discussing very easily with a comfort. How we are getting this comfort? There is a subject called HVAC. It is very, very important for mechanical engineers. Heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. We are uh, getting the light, and we are getting the comfort with the mechanical equipment and the electrical things. Not only this, when it comes to big, big projects, a hell lot of equipment and machinery will be there. So there is a huge importance of electrical and mechanical engineers also in this AAC industry, in this construction industry. Uh, generally. Whenever there's a construction project, if you want to build a facility, then how the flow happens? First, should, there should be a need. Why we have to take up this project? Why we need this facility? Say a client is there, or a developer. He wants to build a home. He wants to build an apartment and wants to give it for tenants. First, in the traditional construction practices, he will approach an architect. Of course, architect will get all the details from the surveyors. But the surveyors will be including in the civil engineering branch only. Let's not talk about that separately. When it comes to architect, he or she will be developing uh, area statements for the building or for the facility. Then he will be subdividing into the features which are required by the client or a developer. In the case of AAC industry, the communication is very, very important. The scope is very, very important. If there is no proper communication, if the architect is not listening to the developer or a client, then what she is going to do? Whatever she is going to do, the client will not accept if he is not ready with that. Then, whenever, yes, we did decide that we are going to construct a project, then how it is going to start? We have to 
go for the services what are all the services we will be including in a project in the traditional construction practice this is the design uh, workflow i can say they will be designed for fire fighting fire production then only the drawings will get approved first drawings will be given by the architect then fire production people will be developing uh, the design as per the architectural drawings then they will get approved to go for the construction then after that electrical engineer will come into the picture and they will design the services then hvs as you mentioned then here comes the structural engineer why particularly this workflow why not structural engineer first then fire electrical hvs see we are in a building we have so many equipments here for example fans we have lights we have tv we have the projector we have laptops many things these are all commands comes under loads only into the building right so after designing all the services we will come to know how much load it is going to give for us to design then we will design the structure as per that the structure should uh, with hold with all the live loads and deadlines right and sometimes with the rolling loads so here comes the structural engineer part he will be developing the structure design after that some other consultants as this industry is very vast i can't name anyone here uh, we can say some other consultants are a vendor and many more people inside of it then when it comes to the installation of services we are going to construct a project we receive the drawings from the architect then general contractor may or may not go to bid particularly because there are some project delivery methods which we will come to know in the later slides say first we are going to build the structure first we should have a structure to install the services then plumbing is very very important why is a very important plumbing public health and engineering now let me give you a real time example say with the morning you wake up and uh, you are brushing your teeth suddenly you turn on the tap there is no water what is going to happen problem right you should thank for that that is only you know, we are bracing at that moment what if some other critical activities we were performing at the time the public health and engineering activities the plumbing is very very important that's why we do build that and we will perform the commission either whatever the plumbing fixtures and equipments we installed are they functioning or no the very very important then electrical yes. of course without electrical things and electricity we are not going to live inside of the building then hvac mechanical people are very very important we are sitting here and comfortably we are experiencing air conditioning if available that is the comfort which given by the mechanical engineer the design of the hvac thing is done by mechanical engineers and the fire fighting the fire protection what you know right the importance of fire protection then others yeah, there are so many vendors and others in the construction process we will discuss more in detail like this in a construction project many and many professional will come involve and contribute how they are going to come in for whenever a person gets a problem he can't call directly and ask the uh, information right to the n number of people and there will be confusion in the case of communication and sharing of the data also then how to avoid this and what about the project management uh, technique and technologies whatever traditionally we are following yes that is good but as the time evolves and in this rapidly evolving the digital uh, way we need for modern problem the modern solution for the complex problems the modern project management and the building information modeling is one of the a better project management way 
and a process to deal with the project and to deal with the information and to deal with the assets i can say you look into that this is the original definition which is available in our public platform that wikipedia but i am going to simplify it the building information modeling is a process which utilizes the 3d representations and so many software techniques and technologies in a simple word see the keywords i highlighted in the blue it is a process supported by various tools and technologies ultimately the digital representation and it is computerized one what is the meaning of computerized one it is a digital thing if you ask me a 3d model i cannot take into my hand and show from the computer that is different story of course we do have latest technologies that is ar vr mr and all to show this that is different story then you know this bim is used by many and many people we can't name all of these in the slides these are definitions from various standards and organizations you know in india not yet we do not have any national standard for bim of course i can add a digital twin also that is one more latest one we do not have any particular standard for bim in india so far but the government is trying to develop the standards in the view of that we recently released the strategic guidelines for bim and digital twin in india if you just google it you will get it the document also and this is the definition again given from the national bim standard it is from usa and let's uh, the break the bim into three parts that is building information and the modeling see whenever we say bim it is a uh, many people think it is a noun it is a noun but not actually let's call it as a verb building it is a verb come to information and modeling we are going to develop a 3d model in such a way they will contain the information and we will keep on developing that that is building information modeling we are building it is not only for buildings it is it can be for any structure and infrastructure that's why that is the verb building the action then there are many things the key concepts in the bim someone calls it as a database someone refers it as a model communication tool and collaboration to another degree what is mean by the collaboration we generally hear so many words like coordination collaboration efficiency effectiveness what are all these words i am really care about what about the terminology i mentioned in my presentation because i do have the research exposure at iis i care about the terms also when it comes to the collaboration it is about how the project is working towards a one goal working together is called a collaboration for a goal or for a project and how working do you mean physically working together not really required digitally also we can work together for example we have one software tool that is revit revit has option for collaboration that what are the file you are working in many people can access the same and can work together at the end if you synchronize that file then what are the work someone did that will be visible to you also it is making our work easy right that is called collaboration and it is a process includes the tools that the power of bim and we will be talking more about it it is not only for the planning construction or designing skills it is over the entire life cycle 
then we all know what is the meaning of planning phase, designing phase, build, I mean construction phase, and anyone can use this building information modeling, not only limited to the architects or engineers or consultants. There are many roles and responsibilities in the industry. Yeah, these are all the people who will be involving and making use of this BIM platform. Not only the architects are the civil engineers. Then when it comes to the evolution or a revolution, see, there is nothing which has developed over the entire night or overnight. There is nothing got developed over the night. Everything taken some time and it got evolved like that BIM also. See, someone find his word in 1970s and become popular in the 2000s. Now, everyone is aware of BIM and there are certain stages in the BIM also. We'll be discussing more on this. Uh, I can say, I can differentiate this in the history of BIM. It is how it is. Then we have some stages or levels in the case of BIM. Right from BIM level 0 to level 3. Right now, we are in the BIM level 2. I will be explaining what is level 0, 1, and 2 and all. When it comes to level 0, earlier there was nothing, say for example, right from the human evolution. If someone wants to show something to the people, how they use it to show? Either they use it to draw on the paper or on the ground. That was one level of communication. After that, electronic thing came. The CAD, computer aided. Computer aided with the help of the computers, the electronic gadgets, they use it to represent the data. That happened in the level zero. And there was no collaboration. Collaboration means whatever so far I explained, working together. That nature was not there. When it comes to the level one, everybody become aware of what is CAD with the help of digital way. Then 3D concept got evolved. Not only in a 2D, we can represent something in a 3D also. That happened in the level one. And partial collaboration happened. People were become aware of that working together as a boon and we can produce more and more results. Now we are in the level two. We have all the 3D models and we, are, we will be able to sharing all the work whatever we are doing, either it's a 2D or a 3D, then they also will be able to edit something and do their part in the same model. That is collaboration. And when it comes to federated model, say for example, there is architecture team, mechanical team, electrical team, they are working independently. Then how we are going to merge all the designs If we are able to merge all those designs and coordinating with the disciplines, if we are preparing that model, then it is called as a federated model, federated BIM model, which contains all the disciplines in it, not only the R key and structure. Then when it comes to level three, full collaboration, no matter either you are working from US or Australia or India, everybody will be able to work on a single file there will be no miscommunication. The work will be going as smooth as possible. And whatever the work you did, you will be able to share very easily. Or the cloud with the tight permissions and control, not only simply just like that. Security is very, very important to work. Then there are types of projects from like a CAD to BIM and scan to BIM. When it comes to CAD to BIM, whatever the 2D, the plans, the documents we have, we will be developing 3D models out of them. That is CAD to BIM, RPDF to BIM, and scan to BIM. Uh, you know the laser scanning, right? Laser scanning. I will show some pics related to laser scanning, then you will get to know. And yeah, these are some CAD to BIM conversion services. Yes, yeah, say for example, we will be having these CAD plans, the 2D uh, documents and drawings based upon this. By understanding this, you will be able to develop a 3D model. The beauty is, from the BIM model, we will be able to develop the 
autocad drawings or a 2d drawings documents very very easily yeah this is how a typical see this is you know these are ducks actually this is a simple from a mechanical drawing which has a ducks in it it is a kind of a cat to bim project yeah this is again cat to bim project in the architecture yes one more one more now come to start to bim you know earlier when uh, if surveying is need to be done then how we use it to do in our surveying subject in surveying laboratory how we use it to measure the area yeah in the traditional practices there are so many things chain surveying is there and also when it comes to the reducer levels and all dumpy levels are there pure <laughs> lights are there total station is there now the extreme level robotic total station is there there are so many things to do survey but in this present era the latest one is 3d laser scanner once you place in the building and we shoot on it will scan the entire area i will show how it look like this is how it looks like and we call this data as a point cloud data whatever you are seeing that is not a 3d object that is a point which is visible like a 3d object or a representation by combining all these points you will get to know the structure this is for simple bridge uh, this is for a building kind of thing yes this is for exact building by using the 3d laser scanners we will get the data something like this and we will be developing a 3d model in the 3d modeling software like this airport construction and all airport construction and all so yes, many assets sir. are there means the chairs is there and uh, many equipments are there lot of things are there after every stage of the airport which is not mentioned in the drawing also they are including some additional features and all so how they will track which asset is where how is that performance so for that only they use this kind of a tool so they capture all the information and they put it in the building information model they will give the numbers also how the performance it is evaluated and asset also tracked So, so now extensively, especially in the large project, project like IT Park, IT Park Infosys, if you take, they have building a whole world. world. The owner doesn't know what what are the things, things are there, how much uh, lifts are there, how much uh, pumps are there, many things are there. So if they collect many things, which is, but sometimes what happens? Uh, a uh, lot of changes are happens in the drawings we can't put everything in the system by tracking also so they bring them Oh my god i'm really sorry i'm really sorry i will yeah i will try to get back to wherever i started okay. yeah 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 i hope this is clear now is it fine online people yes sir yes sir 
uh, when it comes to the renovation projects, for example, the buildings, which were constructed 100 years ago, you will not come to know where is what and what is happening. To capture that kind of data, we use these 3D scanners. Then before the building industry, the GIS people, GIS, and the and when it comes to remote sensing, they people use it. And it is one more example for a scanty beam project. We will get to the input like this, the point of data. Then we will be developing a 3D model like that. That is the output. And out of that model, we will be able to develop whatever we want, whatever the output required. Whether you want 2D plans or a simulation of a building, or want to know what are all the services included in that, or want to know how much of energy is consuming by the building per year or per month, or if you want to know how one asset is performing inside of the building, each and every information will be there in that. How it will be there? Because we are developing that. We are inputting that information. It's not like auto uh, automated thing. If you develop 3D model, then everything will be there. No. While developing 3D model, we should take care in such a way, we are inputting all this data. That, that will be in a better way, we'll come to any software. Then these are dimensions from 3D to 7D. We'll be talking about all these things. When it comes to 3D, we all know, right? The X, Y, Z, the coordinates and the dimensions. In the case of CAD and PDF, we are able to see only the horizontal and vertical lines. And we don't know what is there behind that. Part. But in the 3D, we are able to rotate the thing and able to see what is there behind. And these are some benefits I listed of a 3D beam. Then when it comes to 4D, it is not only about this X, Y, Z of an object, but also about the time. When it comes to the projects, the time is very, very important. We can throw some light on the schedule and the resources, how we are being utilized in the case of construction projects. How our project is getting progressed over the period of time. Simulation is very, very important. I hope you have seen some videos where there will be a, a running of time at one hand and the building is getting constructed in other hand. Hope you guys saw those kind of videos. If you not, yes. If you did not, then just log into LinkedIn. There are n number of, n number of ways. And this is how generally, say this is, for example, Navisworks software, where we will be linking the schedule where we will be having the 3D model, then if you run the simulation, then we will come to know how the building is getting progressed throughout the period of time. Yes, these are some benefits I listed about 4D BIM. Then when it comes to the cost, in the traditional construction practices, how we are uh, extracting the quantity and estimating the cost, how generally it is being done. How the cost estimation being done in the traditional construction practices? What? Yes, in the discipline of quantity surveying, how we are doing that? Let's take a small example. For a 1BHK project, how we are going to estimate the cost? Sorry? Analyzing the rates. Of course, analyzing the rates, how we are going to analyze? By having the plan of that. In the case of plan and the detailed design, we will be having all the walls, doors, windows, what are the furniture we keep. And manually, you will give some rate. Say, this building is containing this much amount of cubic feet or cubic meter of concrete. This is the rate. And what about the, uh, for example, floor area, tiles we have to use for our project. How we will come to know these many number of tiles are required? Manually, we are calculating. 
by considering the area into account and the volume into account but when it comes to the bim projects you know once you develop the 3d model then you'll get everything out of 3d model with the multiple of tricks it is not a magic we are only doing work but we are simplifying with the use of 3d model that's it and these are some benefits i listed and when it comes to 6d the sustainability is very very important the sustainability is a buzzword you know there are some goals like a sustainable development goal when it comes to this building information modeling you will be able to know how the building is performing and consuming energy over the period of time that's the benefit out of it then these are some benefits and when it comes to 7d facility management the building industry is not just like uh, planning designing constructing a building and hand over into the people no it's not limited to that how the building is performing after the handover how the assets are performing after the handover that also includes in the case of bim that explores in 7d seventh dimension these are some benefits and this is how a general dashboard of a 7d bim looks and it is time for the question and answer session so far on whatever we explain i uh, would you like to ask some questions now itself or after completion of enter session no problem sir you can answer uh, ask questions right now yeah please if anyone is having uh, questions you can ask see in archaeological survey of india see for archaeological ident department identified buildings see what are, see these uh, uh, what you are suggesting 3d 4d 5d and 6d and 7d see see the input data is but the taking input data is a very very crucial problem yes yes see if so if it is a, a temple see it is constructed in jola dynasty see we are we are, we are not get the data actual uh, picture like that we cannot get it so collecting data is the major criteria to regenerate or to making same model yes so in that case what is your suggestion with respect to how to collect the data from this point of view as this kind of projects or assets are already built i really recommend a kind of scan to beam workflow with the help of 3d laser scanners you will be scanning each and every part of the building the best example i can give for a uh, old buildings with uh, so much heritage say temple is a best example uh, uh, in my personal experience we did some old museums and when it comes to i i can give you a perfect example rajasthan uh, in the rajasthan we do have many historical places the indian government already uh, utilized the laser scanning service and they developed the 3d models if this kind of initiatives are ready to take by the personals related to the project then it will be appreciated and we will be getting more and more amount of benefit out of this and it is not only limited to this 3d models and the projects when it comes to the tourism for the people and for the places we will be able to showcase all these things then we can attract more and more i hope it is making sense thank you sir thank you thank you it's valid your your answer is valid sir thank you thank you and any more sir which one is the most popular bim tool right now yeah actually for that one also i prepared a special slides i will be presenting on that but okay, i will answer now itself no problem see in the market there are so many players but i see the autodesk products are leading the industry after that the bentley products you people know right when it comes to autodesk we all are aware of autocad after that revit if we really jump into the industry then we have navis works these are all of very very popular tools if you are skilled enough in this kind of tools 
for sure you will success you will get succeeded yeah i hope this is helpful okay sir thank you excellent excellent uh, point i can say when it comes to the accuracy say we are utilizing this scan to beam services we are scanning one place and we are trying to recreate the model or a scene the laser scanners whichever we are using those are very very effective and having so much efficiency in such a way you will get uh, 2 mm to 5 mm accuracy 2 mm to 5 mm accuracy and also i would like to tell there is no problem with the scanners there is a problem with the people who are developing the models because we are human beings right we are only developing the 3d models we do make mistakes can't avoid but we can reduce that that's why i mentioned skill not only knowledge about the tool skill skill is different the knowledge is different so it depends upon the people who are developing the 3d models for the projects we no need to yeah. have much yeah. actually, actually actually problem lies with the labor sir see skilled see you will prepare the 3d models and everything okay but see way way regenerating the kashi that is all na see okay. the several problems have been occurred see the, the, the problem lies with the skilled labor see uh, in ancient days there is a skilled laborers according to on that time right yes. now we are not getting the either missionary nor the labor of yes. that type of skilled laborers yes so yes. this is the major problem lies with the buildings which are old buildings or it is a heritage building or it is an archaeological identified buildings so the problem says with the we are directly you are telling that 2 to 3 mm it's okay it's right right i am accepting it there is no problem at all but the thing is that see, see the skilled labor is the very crucial role in that because if i if if, if an engineer if an architect if a if, if a you know a structural engineer but the thing is that they are not the workers the skilled labor will be the worker so th that is the major criteria there yes yes i agree with your points sir and any more doubts or uh, shall we move to next presentation yeah so i have to ask uh, one question sir yes please yeah sir do we, uh, this one is still uh, this one sir use autocad 3d sir because many uh, any uh, this one advanced software came so in the industry so we are still using the autocad 3d because it is time consuming and more so uh, i am not getting your question you are yeah, telling sir, uh, uh, sir actually my question is sir because in the industry many advanced uh, this one software came so so autocad 3d is outdated uh, outdated now so is it worth it to learn autocad 3d so there are some companies and organizations who still use the autocad 2d and 3d as well but I and also it's a pro engineer also is there sir right now pro engineer is there pro engineer also is working very well yeah right now i do suggest it is better to start scratch that is i can recommend but also it is very important to go for uh, latest tools i can say i really suggest first the 3d modeling tools only because out of the 3d modeling tools also we can extract the 2d and uh, autocad uh, autocad something which started from the 2d and then we explored the concept of 3d also in that i hope it is making sense yes yeah, sir yes yeah, sir thank you sir yeah, without further ado we will jump into the next presentation I hope you people are able to see my screen. Yes, sir. 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 Y
No, no sir, not it. Okay. What you are able to see there? Yeah, nothing, sir. Only names and photos. Your screen is not. You are not presenting the screen. Oh, okay. Yes. Ah. This one or this? We are seeing right now. We are seeing. It's a screen is available, sir. Sure. 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 Yeah, let's jump into our second presentation. We will be explore, exploring more about uh, the BIM softwares, what are all the things available in our industry and the market, and what is meant by level of detail or development. Then, if possible, we will try to showcase a model in the Revit and a federated model in the Navisworks. Yeah, uh, in a broad manner, you know, whenever someone calls a software as a BIM software, then you should possess the features in such a way, able to do a 3D designing in that, 3D modeling, coordination, collaboration review, and information management. Not only producing some a 3D model in the software, but also we will be able to focus on these many features. Either we are able to coordinate with the people, with the available model, inside of the model, and collaboration, then information management. How we are going to manage the project data using the software. It is also a part of the BIM software. It is not just a 3D modeling software. Then these are some of the BIM softwares right now reading the industry. There are some segments like authoring tools, analysis tools, and BIM project management using of tools. In the last slide, I think I mentioned very clearly. Again, here there are so many tools, but no problem. I will be explaining what are the popular tools in the present slides. And these are all BIM coordination tools. As I mentioned earlier, there is a difference between the design, modeling, coordination, and collaboration. For each and everything, we have special tools, softwares, I can say. Yes, when it comes to the 3D modeling software, the first rank goes to our Revit, which is part of Autodesk family. Autodesk is a very giant software development <laughs> company, right, for our AC industry. They are developing a hell of a lot of softwares and products and we are using them. The first rank goes to Revit. In the Revit also, we have so many disciplines. Revit architecture, structure, Revit mechanical, Revit electrical, Revit plumbing, and Revit fire production. And there are so many plugins available for the Revit software. That's why it is holding the rank number one in the industry. And then Tecla. Tecla is also very, very a good powerful software, I can say, particularly for our structures, people use this kind of software. I hope you heard of the name Tecla Structures, Tecla Structures. And there is a software, Archicad, which is developed by Graphisoft. It is also one of the software being used mostly by the architects and engineers to develop designs and 3D models. Then all plan we have that is by Nemanchuk company, then Ecosim, that is by Bentley, and Vectorworks, Rhino, Katia, Solidworks, etc. In engineering, you might have heard 
this CATIA SOLIDWORKS and all. Our friends, mechanical engineers, use it to deal with these softwares. And when we were there, AutoCAD, Revit, civil engineers dealt with. I can suggest to go for Revit, Tecla, ARCHICAD, whatever you like. Those are all the uh, softwares, I can say, which are ruling the industry. And one more, AECOSIM. The AECOSIM is a better product that is also being used. And in the coming slides, I'll be showing the companies also who are using what, what is suggestible, everything. Then when it comes to collaboration, when it comes to the platform in which we will be working together, we have these many products or platforms. The BIM 360, which is from again Autodesk, they have developed the product or a platform. Then the Trimble people, Trimble Connect, then Alplan, BIM Plus, BIM Site, and DRO Fast, BIM X, BIM Site, Dalex, etc. These are all the collaboration platforms. But I suggest as a beginner or as a freshers in this industry, you go for first software's derivative or uh, Tecla or uh, Architect, this kind of software. Then it will be very, very easy. And believe me, the softwares and tools are very, very easy because we only developed those software. So very easy to learn. And a hell lot of resources are available over the internet already. If you want to learn any Autodesk product, go into the Autodesk website and find the resources. If you want to learn the Bentley products, go into the website and learn. Hell lot of information and resources is already there in the internet. Then when it comes to particular architecture, these are all the softwares we will have. Uh, no problem, I think uh, this is the recorded session. You may get the recorded version or these presentations I will be giving to you only. Then these are all about the structure. When it comes to the MVP, mechanical electrical plumbing, these are all the software tools we have in the industry. Many people use that data disk Revit MEP. Then when it comes to the estimation and simulation, again, Navisworks software is on the top, data disk Navisworks, then following many more. When it comes to sustainability, assessing the building health and performance, then we do have these many softwares for that. When it comes to facility management, how we are maintaining a facility, how we are looking after the facility, this can be done by using this kind of platforms or uh, software. Then when it comes to the very, very important one, level of detailed development. You know, uh, the thing, uh, the interesting thing in BIM projects is, we can develop something in such a way it can be recognizable. Say there is a building which have these many rooms. We can develop in such a way only up to that level of detail. We no need to give more detail. For example, I will try to explain the same thing by using some pictures. Say it is LOD 100. Only box is there. Only box, like a volume. We are able to identify something is there, but we don't know actually what is that. That is LOD 100. When it comes to the LOD 200, now we are coming to know there is something which has some shape, some size, and at some location. That is LOD 200 level of detail. And when it comes to 300, we are getting some real look. But still, it is simplified. We are able to identify what is that. We will help us this level of detail. Then we have LOD 350. Now we are coming to know what is this actually and how it is getting supported. The connections we are having, the support, that is a level of detail which we are providing. Then 350, it is more refined. The more details you will be seeing in the picture, 
and 400 the more and more the real look we can develop 3d models in such a way they will be looking like exactly as real as possible that is at lod 400 and there is something called lod 500 this is for as built structures if you use laser scanners and develop a 3d models then we call them as lod 500 Yeah, this is uh, everything in a one picture. And when it comes to the timeline in the design phases, how we will be tracking in terms of LOD, it is very, very important. For suppose, if you join in any BIM company, right from the scratch, they will be calling that model as, this is the model at LOD 200 level. This is the model we have to develop for LOD 400 level. That is all about the details which we are giving inside of the model. Then simple example for a door. Say in the concept phase L100, we are seeing something is there, but we don't know what is that. In the second L200, something is there with uh, some other uh, color and the design, but still we don't know what is that. And in the L300, 350 level, we are coming to know, yes, that is the door. Having that much configuration. And the LOD 400, the more detail. And as built, once we get constructed the door, it will be looking like that. Then, yeah, the doors example, whichever I already explained. And when you come to similarly, the air handling unit, AHU, it is more oriented towards mechanical paper. Yes, uh, about so far, whatever I explained, the BIM softwares and the level of detail or development. Uh, do you have any questions? Sir, do you think that uh, the emerging effect of AI that can replace BIM? Uh, there is nothing as such. AI replacing something, AI, AI will be acting like a, a powered one. We have already BIM models. If we integrate with the AI, then whatever the activities we are doing will be simplified. That's it. I hope this is making sense. No, sir. Uh, I am not acceptable with you because see, AI, AI also we are using. They are developing and they are also um, several software developing with respect to the construction and as well as infrastructure development. See, BAM is the only the outside software, it will be the correct thing. See, AI also, next in future, it's a major criteria. Yes, I agree, major criteria. But AI is not going to replace anything. AI will help to achieve the results very fast and very easily. I can say that. But the BIM is a process. It will not be replaced, but it can be benefited by the use of AI. I hope this is making sense. Of course, it may be. It will be BAM also the base for the AI. Oh, I accept it. But the yes. thing is that AI will be growing faster than any other uh, software. And yes, also, I agree. Things. I agree. Yes, so I agree. to interrupt, Rajesh sir, uh, actually AI will be an additional tool which helps the BIM for us to uh, uh, do in the construction field. That is what yeah, I am yeah, yeah, telling you. That's what I am telling you. That's, that's, that's what, what Navin sir is also trying to say. Yes, yes. Can you repeat, ma'am? Sir, Ravin, ma'am, can you repeat what you said? Sir, AI will be an additional tool which will be helpful in the BIM field. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Yes. Any more questions? If we do not have any, then we will look into the next presentation. Is that fine? Yes. Sir. How do you people want any break? Yeah, yeah. You can you can proceed to next presentation. Sure, sure.
I hope you are able to see my screen. Yeah, yeah, you, we we are able to see. Yeah, Bharat, yes. Yeah. Delhi Kalsha Martha is Bharat? Delhi Kalsha. Delhi Kalsha. In this presentation, we are going to talk. What are the benefits of Shobha, wind? Shobha, I have project. Uh, Sukha wind, sir. Wind Delhi there. Uh, wait, Ashok, sir. How oh, they are in charge? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I am muted. Yeah. yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah, in this presentation, we are going to look into what are the BIM benefits, the standards and guidelines, and are there any countries which made BIM as a mandate for the projects, then implementation status in India, barriers, and what is the future of this BIM, BIM roles, responsibilities, and opportunities, and we'll give a conclusion for this session. When it comes to BIM benefits, there are N number of benefits. But majorly, I listed some of them here. When it comes to visualize projects in a pre-construction, earlier, whenever we did with the construction phase, then only we will come to know how our building will look like. But now, just with the help of the plans, sections, and the details, we will be developing the 3D models. Then in the computer, you will be seeing it before construction itself. Visualization is playing an important role. It is not only just looking like uh, uh, we are watching a 3D model in the computer, not just like that. When it comes to our brain, how our brain perceives the information. Say, I am placing the AutoCAD drawing in front of you, or I am placing a 3D model in front of you. To which one you will get attracted more, drawing or a 3D model? Obviously, 3D model only. Why? Because we know uh, how our brain works. In the case of reading a CAD plan or any drawing, we have to see that, we have to read that, we have to understand that, we have to analyze it, then we will come to know what is that. But in the case of 3D, by the moment you see something, directly it is getting strike to our brain. So result is coming in a very fast manner. Interpretation is getting reduced. That is the beauty of the visualization. And uh, let me give you a real life example. Earlier we used to read stories in the books, right? Once upon a king, once upon a time there lived a king who has seven sons, etc, etc and all. How you are perceiving the story? Another, another scenario. You are going to a movie and you are watching a Javan movie. How you are perceiving that? You will be feeling like you are the hero in that movie, right? Obviously, that is the feeling. Uh, that is the uh, perceiveness which we are getting. Same thing here also. And better coordination class direction. About all these things, we will be discussing in the latter slides. When it comes to visualization, we are going to develop the project or the 3D models before breaking the ground. Then you will come to know how your home or a factory or a, any office will look like. If you want any changes, you can suggest there itself. It is very easy to do the changes compared to the on site. There is a difference. When I am preparing a 3D model in a computer, it is very easy to make changes. It will not cost me or it will not take much time. But whenever you are on the construction site, it take going to take your time, cost, everything, resources, everything. That's why we call tire, time is directly proportional to cost in the case of construction projects. And better coordination and class reduction. As we mentioned, not only architecture and the civil people, many people will be working in the project. They will be developing their designs. What if our door is clashing with some other uh, plumbing pipe? 
of course it will not actually just let's assume that in this picture what you are going to see see in the first picture the pipe is getting crashing with the i can say yeah it is looking like a duct you know what is duct right duct which carries air condition uh, condition air there is duct this pipe is crashing with the duct is that really suggestible on site no right it is going to create a problems so these kind of things once we take care of all the designs from the multiple people we can develop the patented model then we will be testing if there are any crashes then we will be able to resolve before construction we are saying saving lot amount of time and the money then when it comes to construction the scheduling and sequencing with the help of the software and the simulation you will be getting to know how our construction of the project is getting evolved over the period of time then model based cost estimate as i mentioned with the help of 3d models we will be developing we can extract the quantity how many number and the cost what is the cost of those numbers and the equipments and the assets present in the model then improved on site collaboration and communication no matter wherever you are at any time you will be able to access the project data you will be able to uh, do the work with the updated data say there is a person who is sitting in the office there is a person who is installing the services on site if a person sitting in the office is making some changes in the design then how that the site guy will come to know there should be a proper communication right this bim platforms develop that communication whatever the changes the designer is making in the office they will be getting updated to the on site team so they will install services as accurate as possible with the updated data then transparency and money more <laughs> it is not only about uh, developing 3d models and the doing construction before that also we have some project delivery methods and some contracts where we will be submitting the bids and the tender responses and we will be getting the appointment and approvals everything will be stored in the bim platforms with a tight security the permissions and control it is not like uh, the people who were involved in the project they will be have access to all the data now we do have maintain security for our project data and bim standards and guidelines these are some guidelines developed by different countries right now as i mentioned india is trying to develop standards it is on it but some of the countries already they developed and they are following the most implemented accepted international bim standard guidelines is iso which is developed iso 19650 make a note of it it is a very very important standard iso 19650 if possible we will talk more about that this is how that iso 19650 part 1 and 2 the books looks like and in the case of these parts we have from part 1 and 6 currently the 4 and 6 are under development in the industry we are actively using part 1 and 2 standard very up to date however in the civil engineering we followed rc for rcc design what is this code of standard we do is in india yes for the steel design also we do have some code yes and for the building overall we have nbc like that for the bim also we do have code implementation code that is iso 19650 uh, part 1 and 2 are actual we are using and these are all the contents which present in the part 1 this is advanced level of topic when you get into the industry and the companies which are really implementing bim they will talk about all this standards then it is a part 2 then yeah these are some countries which mandated the bim 
this is adoption yeah it is about uh, status in india this is the figure how may how much percentage people are aware about the bim how many number of people doesn't aware of the bim how many number of people are already using bim uh, this is a figure and the user is 22% yes and i am damn sure in the near future that percentage is going above and beyond you know in india there is a one organization india bim association if you are yes yes uh, amarnath sir is a head for that he previously worked as a head oh great 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 yeah there is a particular thing for bim also in our india and they do provide very quality amount of courses when it comes to this uh, you can have a look into it then these are some barriers you know when it comes to barriers not only with the people also with the policies frameworks <laughs> it is not in one or two persons hand it is a big level framework and the issue people are trying to sort it out people identify the problems it means we got the 50 percent solution now people are working on it and i can say this presentation is also part of that one only say when i asked the first few people how many of you are aware of them and heard of them hardly three to four people raise in the hands now if i ask you then you are all, you are all going to raise your hands right it is making the difference this session is making the difference then opportunities and roles and these are all the roles in a broad manner i mentioned but there are n number of roles in the bim field itself there are n number of consultants in the bim field itself there is so much scope i can say yes i listed down some of the opportunities roles available in our industry uh, if you jump into any company's website then they will be hiring career portal will be there then there will be information what are the roles responsibilities they are looking into i also listed some of the companies mnc companies and the india national level companies and when it comes to the future of bim there is no doubt about it it is going to rule the industry and it is a part of the industry don't think that bim is only there in the industry not nothing else no bim is a part in the industry people are being constructing the projects the buildings bridges everything without using bim also earlier but now bim came into the picture it is making our job easy okay across the world there are so many projects uh, which already proven the uh, benefit of implementing bim, BIM in the projects some examples i mentioned shange tower oakland international airport and we work do you know we work we work is an organization which provides co working spaces i in my personal experience i worked for we work behalf of my company you know we work takes up uh, renovation kind of projects say they will take a building which has nothing then we will go and do the laser scanner then we will come to know what is there and we will plan in such a way where to accommodate uh, furniture and the people and the services inside of the building this kind of things will come into the picture then these are all some of the projects in india we already implemented the bim and got benefited now if you take any airport project it is whenever it is coming in india every airport project is taking up the bim and the infrastructure projects Uh, not only those four projects many many are there and these are some bim firms uh, in india i can say 
there are a hell lot of companies in the world wide but uh, currently in india there are so many i listed uh, most uh, renowned companies i can say and also some of the multinational companies i mentioned highlighted in the blue and these are all some of the references i used for the presentation this is open for question and answers sir actually it's a very good presentation i i have actually uh, uh, participated in many webinars uh, so i have been or we see sir connected by cmti that is uh, mr ashok who is uh, doing a very good job but uh, i am the first I, I, this is a very good presentation i have seen i am thankful to i am very thankful to you for navin sir as well as mr. ashok so i am congratulating both of you because i am a senior engineer working for law from the last 30 years to the government of karnataka as an assistant executive engineer so i am very thankful to both of you thank you thank you sir welcome sir in audience you want to speak thank you sir, thank you, sir. mr rajesh sir for participating actively in our programs i am also thankful to you sir yeah you get opportunity to participating thank you sir we generally conduct every month one webinar in any of the sundays sir, in various topics not only we are uh, uh, having bim we are into construction management and interior design so many topics uh, we are conducting so it is uh, just a knowledge enhancement for the people so please join uh, whenever time permits every month we are conducting programs uh, actually I, I am also giving some lectures uh, with respect to the ati sir that is administrative mm -hmm. training center in uh, mysore so yes, sir. i am as a, see i, I am especially uh, i have look after the tendering process and everything See, see okay. so if you have okay. any chance, I will uh, provide you uh, some uh, presentation. If you give me some time, uh, definitely, sir. Definitely, sir. Rajesh, sir. We want your support also. See, many engineers uh, coming out from colleges, they need some skills. Sir. So, definitely, we will provide. Especially, sir, especially for tendering. Yeah, yeah. Can I share your number also, sir, in chat boxes? So I will call you personally. Sure, sure, sir. Sure, sir. Sure. Okay, sir. Okay. In Mysore also, there is upcoming program in the month of November. So I would like to invite you for that program, sir. And only offline programs are there in some colleges, sir. It's about training, sir. So I request you to come and give an idea how they can enter into government jobs, what are the opportunities available, all these things. It's definitely, sir, I will uh, definitely attend uh, your uh, invitation and, and I will attend, sir. Thank you, sir. Sure, sir. Sure. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Somebody asked me, I'm saying this. Yes, yes. I'm seeing uh, comments in such a way how to get the job as a fresher in the industry. I hope online people are able to hear me. Yes, sir. See, what I do suggest for the freshers is. You know, uh, let me, let's take me as an example. When I was in my engineering second year, the Andhra Pradesh State Skill Development uh, program happened. For a one week, the people reached out to the college and they taught the it for one week. But after that, I found resources over online. Then I started learning Revit. I developed some 3D models. I also started preparing my own portfolio. In the case of getting job in the BIM, it is really very, very easy because of the skill we will get in the 3D modeling and the portfolio. Why portfolio? See, there are n number of students who are graduating from the colleges. Everybody is applying for the job, whichever you are applying. Then how you are getting differentiated out of all those people? You should show something which is more than the uh, remaining people, right? In my matter, that is portfolio. Say I learned AutoCAD. 
I practiced so many floor plans, so many sections, elevations. I made this as a document. These are all the practice work projects I did. That is my portfolio. When it comes to BIM, the 3D model software Revit. In the Revit, I developed a 3D model, which is starting from simple a 1 BHK, 2 BHK, or a big commercial office, developing a 3D model, doing the work, and presenting that in such a manner. People will get to know, yes, this guy lent the tool. This guy having the practice. If you give that opportunity, he will do the work, whatever we say. We should give that commitment to the recruiters who are uh, in front of for us. We do have n number of uh, platforms, right, to showcase ourselves. My best, I use LinkedIn. You can use n number of platforms like that. If you are a fresher, basic one is AutoCAD, then learn Revit. What are the progress you are making in learning? Post that to our LinkedIn, improve your connections, build your network, contact with the company managers, HRs, directors, then start requesting or applying for the job portals in their careers. Upload your resume as well as portfolio. Not only resume and the portfolio you upload, they will see what is the person did in the past. That is the benefit and that is one way to approach the companies to get the job, I can say. I hope this is helpful. Uh, if there are no questions, then we can end the session now. Sir, what are the roadmaps of learning BIM, sir? Learning BIM. Uh, I can say the person who just graduated from the BTEC degree has some path. The person who did PG has some path. For the BTEC freshers, I recommend first learning the software tools, preparing portfolio and applying. For the postgraduate people, uh, uh, doing a separate course on BIM will help you to leverage that in the career. Even a lot of companies hiring a diploma engineers also. Recently, if I see Atkins is a company, they hired a diploma civil engineers across Karnataka and they onboarded. See, they need a fresh minds only. Who knows a little bit about drawings? That is the preset requirements for the BIM. After then, the training happens according to the client's requirement, which software the company decides. Okay, if you have prior software knowledge, that is added advantage for them. You got it or not? Yeah, let me tell you one final thing. You don't have to worry at all about company's expectations. They will not expect more from the freshers or from the recent graduates. They will expect in such a way, if we take this candidate and teach something, either he will be able to do that or not. That only they will see. Take me only. Of course, I was knowing the Revit software, but I... I never worked on real projects. I jumped into a company. They trained me for the first two to three months. Done. Everything we got. This is how company works. No one expert 100% from you. They will train you and they will get most out of you. That's it. Only thing is you have to be flexible for the training and you should have a positive attitude towards growth. That's only every company wanted. Not only BIM company, every company's requirement is we, they need a young people who can work for them for that uh, discipline, time management, everything they will look for. All your soft skills. Yes, those are all the important criteria and eligibility to get a job. Uh, you know, digital presence is very, very important. Digital presence. And whatever the work you do, you post that uh, to the people, you receive some feedback, and you try to develop all that. Everything is going to make sense. And yeah, that's how I think we have to progress. And when it comes to me, I am really very active over the uh, digital media platforms. I do maintain my own YouTube channel. That is the place where I throw the 
some light on architecture, engineering, and construction industry, and also latest technologies that is augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality. Not only that, and many and many more. Mm -hmm. can follow see, the YouTube channel. See, these days people are uh, interested. The real estate companies they are buying the property, sitting in abroad. Right. They are using the technology. They are not visiting physically to the site and see how the apartment is constructed, how it looks like, and all. Even the interior companies, lot of companies, they are using the technology. Uh, yeah, they are uh, visualizing the things. Okay, so they are also upgrading their business model so that they get more customers, very good uh, experience to the customers, and uh, what really the customer wanted, same thing they are intended to provide. Then they get a more jobs, more benefits, more profits. That is what ever the companies like Christie, Shreera, many real estate companies are there. They are investing on the technologies, so that customer no need to come to their office itself. So sitting in their home, they can visualize the home, how it is a future project, how it will be, how the interiors will be there, all these things. During the COVID, lot of people are invested in these uh, technologies. Yeah. yeah. Finally, uh, we wanted to. You want to speak? Yeah. Yeah. Someone is asking me to share the LinkedIn profile and etc. If you just Google my name, Navin Kumar Naiko, you will be getting everything. Thank you for your time. With this, I will end the session. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the online uh, participants who were joined across India. For this program, nearly 60 to 70 engineers have joined from various states. So for them, it may be useful. This Sunday may be a little bit useful for them. Let us hope for that. And you can uh, get connected and learn more, grow more. That is what uh, recently I want to say. And recently, I also watched a web series of one of the stock marketer, how he made the money and all. Many learnings by watching and by seeing the social media and using the technologies we can use. So spend your time wisely for your development. That's what I want to say. The learning never stops. Okay. If you have good learning, learning will be more. Got it. So with this, I thank uh, Mr. Navi. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Asok, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Navin, sir. Thank you, sir.
चटी कहा है बेटे सेशन वो शो और रोट
Ja. Ja.